this fall, and uh, we have heard from a number of different dimensions of uh, campus activities related to uh, promoting a more sustainable campus. Today, we turn to food systems. And as I'm sure most of you know, food systems have become a very hot topic in recent years. Uh, we have lots of uh, students interested in that. Uh, lots of people doing uh, local gardening, uh, the student farm, working in inner city communities uh, to try to get better food access. Um, and we will hear today about um, food issues on this campus. Uh, we are lucky to have with us Gina Rios, uh, who's general manager of retail dining. Um, and she uh, has a diverse background, which I will let her um, tell you about. But she uh, originally, her degrees are in math and philosophy. So she's living proof that we all can take many different career paths and wind up doing very interesting things. So thank you for being with us today. Okay, so I'm going to talk about how we approach it, approach sustainability, especially in our retail unit, um, and tell you about our story a little bit. So my responsibilities on campus are for the food services in the Silo Union, including the Gunruff Pub, the Starbucks at the Ark, the BioBrew Cafe, and the Biological Sciences Lab. Scrubs Cafe out in Health Sciences, um, the catering on campus, and concessions both at athletic and the performance concessions at the Mondavi Center, and occasionally at Freeborn Hall when there's still the um, certain performances over there. And then we also um, do the vending on campus, and that would be the food vending. Um, Coca Cola does the beverage vending directly. Um, also, we have some very valued partners that we subcontract to on campus. The Cargo Coffee, which has three coffee kiosks around campus. The La Crepe and the Silo, um, very proud of that. And the new Shaw's Halal Food that is over Caddy Corner from the Silo. It's a trailer that's uh, serving uh, Halal Food starting this fall. Um, we are a part of Memorial Union Auxiliary Services, which includes um, units such as Campus Unions, the Games Area, and then um, in a broader sense, the Bookstore and ASUCD are in our, the same business unit, and we are a part of Student Affairs. So our mission on campus is to provide service, most definitely, but we are also a revenue stream for student affairs. And as such, we more often we're going to do our best to provide options rather than forcing things to go in a certain direction to educate people so that there's demand for the, the demand changes to meet different options. There are times where we'll, we'll force a decision where, for example, um, a little bit over a year ago, we decided that we weren't going to have plastic bags, the you know, t-shirt bags in our units anymore. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me and my background because there, there's a slant that I always take to things that might be a little bit surprising unless you understand that. I grew up in southwestern Colorado. Uh, it's an area where there's, there's dry land mountains and high desert kind of all meet. There's not much water there. So through my lens of the world, water conservation is easy. Some of the other things that I didn't grow up with, it's harder to understand. I think everyone has their background, and they have the lens through which they see things. And that's something that as we move forward, it's really important to understand that how you perceive things isn't it going to be how someone from a different background perceives things? Um, I grew up, my parents had 30 acres, and we pretty much were sustainable and organic. We had our own alfalfa fields where we grew the hay that we fed our livestock. We had um, dairy goats. That was our source of milk. We um, butchered and slaughtered our own meats. And we grew our own garden, four or five acres of garden. So when you talk about local, I know local. 
And I also know some of the pitfalls of local where if it's a bad year for peas, you're eating beans and corn, beans, corn, beans, corn, and then maybe once a week you get peas. Who, who knows? It all depends on that growing season. And did you plant too early? Did sprouts come up? Did they freeze? What what have you done? You know, how do you, how do you um, account for that when if you can't get another planting in soon enough? Because there, it's a short growing season there. Um, and then when I was young, you know, I had to, if I want money, I had to earn it. And so I did things like going out in the hay field and trapping gophers. I got 10 cents a gopher, and then I got a great increase where I was up to a quarter a gopher. Um, and, you know, when you wanted to go fishing, we, we had ponds that had trout in them. You'd go out and you'd dig up your grubs if you want to have bait. And the same way, you know, I earned a lot of money picking rocks out of the garden, too, which is, you know, it works, but it's not, it's not <laughs> top on the list for a good time. So I am fascinated by decomposition. Compost is a wonderful thing. I do not mind digging through the garbage. And, you know, mold is, is neat. It's furry and attractive. So, you know, it's really interesting to see how things degrade over time. How one thing, how, how there's a cycle, how one thing becomes something else. And when I was young, I didn't really appreciate that as much as, well, you never appreciate things when you're young. So I didn't. Where, you know, there was that closed loop of, you know, growing, you throw it out, you bring it back. I started to realize that in college where um, there's one day I come home for vacation and I go out in the chicken yard and after you butcher, you've got a carcass and you can throw it out in the chicken yard because they're going to pick the meat off the bones. You know, the dog can drag them around. But, and I thought, you know, this probably isn't how everyone lives. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad way to live if, if you can do that. So um, I, I can't even tell you when or how for dining services we made the decision of we're going we're gonna to jump on this and look at how our systems are running and say how can we be more sustainable. For resident dining, they've been able to do a wonderful job with, with their volume and their connections, um, working with, I don't know if any of you have been to Farm to College Night, um, but working with local farmers, starting to get that supply chain going. And for me with retail, and I'll talk about Carl's Jr. and Taco Bell a little bit later, that for us, what for us was the low hanging fruit on how we advanced originally was our waste stream. You know, what is going into the landfill and how do we make that be less and less and less? Um, so with composting, you have to have the infrastructure to support it. We can separate out all the composting materials we want to. But if there's no way to get that to a place that it can be handled properly and biodegrade the way it needs to, it's worthless. Um, we can buy all kinds of biodegradable products, but if they still go into the landfill, they're, they're going to look like this 20 years from now. You know, where it's like it's better that they're biodegradable, but the right things aren't going to happen to them. Um, so we are fortunate enough that, and for one thing, the ASUCG unit, Project Compost, has done a wonderful job throughout the years with uh, students picking up compost and getting it to the student farm, where it's composted and it goes into the student farm. And then as we moved into looking at post-consumer compost, there is a facility in Dixon called Jepson Prairie and then there's uh, solid waste on campus who gets it there. And so we have that complete cycle where we can collect it. It goes to the compost farm. And it becomes this nutrient-rich soil kind of stuff. 
And that's, that's good. So with that infrastructure set up, um, one of our most interesting adventures is Aggie Stadium, where we do a, a zero waste food service there. And it's zero waste in that what we hand to the consumer, every bit of that is biodegradable or recyclable. And we'll talk a little bit more, I hope, about campus goals if I can go quick enough. Um, so one day, touring the new facility before it opened, we're standing under the goal post, and Lane King from R4 is there, and Bob Bullis from ICA, Intercollegiate Athletics, and they kind of say, oh, we want to do a zero waste stadium. And I was there with a couple members of our team, and really naively, we said, oh yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> and honestly, if we knew what we were getting into, it wouldn't have changed the decision. But I have to say, when we made the decision, we hadn't thought through it at all. <laughs> um, and we had time to do that. You know, it wasn't like they sprang it on us seven days before the first game. You know, this, this was uh, probably in the spring before the fall opening of the first season. So then we went back and said, okay, here's the list of our menu, and started going through how do we serve these items and how do we need to change that. So you take a simple hot dog. Our process was to cook them, cook them in the bun, and wrap them in this foil. And the foil helped to keep them hot. You know, we kept them in hot warmers, but the foil helped with that. And the foil helped keep the bun from getting all crusty and nasty, which we learned when we went to paper. Then paper, biodegradable, good stuff. Well, we had, part of the time we had cold hot dogs. When we managed to keep them hot enough, we would occasionally have that crunchy, not so good bun. And that was all bad. And Susan knows it was bad because she was there with us some days. <laughs> um, and so that was that was the first year was the the paper. Um, what we figured out since then is we serve them out. How oh, I do have one here. We serve them in this boat, but it's immediate. We've got the we've got the hot dogs over um, canned heat. And they put buns in these. Maybe they have 20 buns laid out, ready to go. Stick a hot dog in right off the heat and hand it to the customer. And they've got a hot, hot dog with a fresh bun. Now, you, you look at this, though. This is, this is a lot of production here. It's been created. It's been cut. It's been folded. It's been glued. For next year, we want to look at how do we find a simpler, less stuff, you know, this is too much stuff. We're going to be looking for a smaller hot dog boat. And where we go from there, I'm not sure, but that, that's the progression of the hot dog, where we went through that learning process. And it's, that's it, it's finding the balance between the, the, the packaging sustainability and the goodness of the product. And the balance can't be here where they're both equally bad. Um, we want it to be here where we've got a decent packaging and a good product, or a really good packaging and a really good product. That's where we're trying to get to with it. Um, ice cream. Ice cream is really hard because it's packaged in foil or plastic. You, you go, go think about it when you're looking at ice cream the next time. Um, there's very, for individual servings, you know, it might have a nice plastic carton, like take divs, for example, but that lid has a ring of plastic in it. Or you have a, you have a Haagen-Dazs bar, it's got a cardboard carton around it, but inside is foil. And that's not right recyclable foil, it's not biodegradable foil. Um, so we found, the first year we tried this innovative product where <coughs> It was a capsule of ice cream, a plastic capsule, which was actually recyclable. And you stuck it in this little thing, almost like you know the giant um, cork pullers, if you've ever and corked a ton of wine, those are great. And then the ice cream squirted out into the cone. In theory, the ice cream would squirt out, squirt out, out a crack in the side of the capsule. 
the ice cream would not squirt out because it was too frozen and hadn't quite reached the right melty point. And it was a difficult year for ice cream. <laughs> the next year, we tried to hand scoop it. Well, hand scooping it, you can get ice cream, you do it, but keeping the area clean, keeping the ice cream protected from the elements, keeping your scoopers clean is challenging. So that, that was okay. And, and we do continue to scoop today where we have, we actually have a local product, it's Merlino's Freeze, we scoop that. And what we were also able to do is get an ice cream vendor to package some little ice cream sandwiches in paper. And we had to do a run of 10,000 to get that done. They warehouse it for us because if, if we get ice cream in in paper, our freezers are not at a constant enough temperature. People go in and out, in and out. Sure, everything stays frozen, but not to the degree it has to, plus the exchange of air. I'm probably going way beyond what I understand I'm talking about, but the point is, paper, sand, paper wrapped sandwiches in our refrigeration on campus, it slowly starts to taste not so good. So we get it in two, three weeks before we use it, have, we have to use it all, then we'll get a new batch in from the warehouse where it's held at those more ideal um, conditions. And that's, that's working. But some, someday someone will figure out how to package an ice cream bar in a biodegradable bag and it'll still taste good in two months. I know that will happen. Um, you know, things at the stadium that we worried about, when we serve some in a soda, we don't give them a lid. We'll, we'll have people say, well, how about a lid? And most of the groups, we work with a lot of student organizations for fundraising opportunities for them, for service there. They're pretty good at saying that it's not biodegradable. And people, I thought we were going to get a little bit more um, aggressive pushback on that. People have been pretty like, oh, okay. And some people, they'll go away muttering, oh, I really want a lid. <laughs> um, we, we do have uh, straws that are biodegradable. I didn't bring any straws over. But another challenge at the stadium and everywhere that we do biodegradable disposables is some of them look almost exactly alike. And it's confusing. You know, we're trying to educate people but I am not the only person that's going to give someone a disposable spoon in, in their month or year or whatever. They're going to get disposable spoons everywhere. Some of them will be biodegradable, some of them won't. It's, it's hard to tell the difference. Um, I'll wait with those. But it, it can become confusing. The straws, I think, are confusing because if you handed me two straws, I might be able to distinguish between the two. If you handed me one straw, I don't think I could tell you this is biodegradable or this is not. Um, when we went into the stadium, we, we stopped selling packaged chips, um, you know, little uh, Doritos things, um, because there's no packaging. Sun chips should be coming out sometime next year. I think it's slated for Earth Day with a biodegradable package. Again, the problem is shelf stability. You put chips in paper, they're going to go stale pretty quick in comparison to the current packaging. Um, and then the other thing with sustainability, and I think, I, I think campus is very good at this, but those of us who need to be ambassadors for sustainability <coughs> are taking action. So what we've struggled with at the stadium is the first game, we might have 65% diversion rate. That's not good. By the last game, we're over 90%. And it's going through that learning curve. How do we do it quicker? And that's what we're starting to be able to focus on more and more now that our hot dogs are hot. And with that, in the last couple games, I became, that lady's going to come in here and dig in our trash. And if we didn't do it right, we're going to have to go through all the trash and separate it again. <laughs> and that work, you know, for me to come into their booth and just start piling through the trash and they're seeing me in there digging around, it made more impact 
then you know, we could have handed them a paper when they signed up, a week later hand them a paper, but seeing you willing to go in the trash made a difference. So it's that, okay, I, I'm pretty passionate about it, if you have figured it out. So it's that, that commitment. And like I said, I grew up digging in the dirt, so I don't mind going in the trash. And you know, if another person on my team, if that doesn't work for them, that's okay. I'll go in the trash for them every day. And if they're willing to do something else that I'm not so keen on, that's what teamwork is. Um, I'm going to um, jump ahead a little bit since I'm taking so long. But it's um, a lot of what we've done is it's trying to educate our employees. And we, I, I have maybe 70 career staff and two or 300 student staff in retail. I am very proud of them because some of, so much of it has been so easy. When we were getting into the, okay, plastic bags, that might not be a good thing. I sent out to my team a slideshow. It's that slideshow I'm sure many of you have seen where, you know, there's a bird and it's just festooned with, you know, a bag around its neck. Um, there's the drift at the beach where it, it's just this immense drift of bags. It's all those incredibly nasty pictures of what happens after the plastic bag you know, comes home from the store and gets out of your house somehow. And I, I sent that out, and then the next day was a meeting where I wanted to talk about, well, let's see, you know, what's the impact of taking away. I sat down, and someone looked at me, and they're like, well, we're going to stop using them. And it's like, I was ready to convince everyone. <laughs> and so I, I missed out on convincing everyone, because it was just this, okay, we're done. It's like, okay, well, let's figure out how we do this, and... You know, part of it is, you know, having an alternative. So if, if someone came in and wanted to buy a reusable bag, we have them in our units. We will still use paper bags when someone has collected enough stuff. But we got done with the plastic bags. And then getting done with all the paper bags will be another step at some point. Um, the same way with, you know, we decided, okay, as many employees as we have, we provide a free meal to all of them for every shift they work. And they're taking a paper cup every day to drink their drink. It's like, why are we doing that? And that's another one where I thought, okay, I'm really going to have to convince people. And within days, I see people having their own mug. You know, we're not perfect. We still have to remind everyone that it's one of those transitions where there wasn't an argument. Um, What's interesting is when we start talking about, you know, that deeper conversation that we'll have occasionally, what do you do at home? People do great things at home, but have one or even where it's like, well, I have to have a bag lining my trash can. Well, you don't have to, and I understand that you really want to. And some of those conversations where they, they did it so quick for, you know, handing a Taco Bell order in a paper bag, and then it's just like, no, I can't do this at home. And that's part of, we're all made up different, we have different perceptions of things. Um, and being closer to the environment. I didn't know how much this had affected people until um, while building the bus terminal at Silo, there were a lot of um, trees that were taken out in that process. And that needed to happen. New trees have been planted. But I came around the corner the day that was happening, and one of my employees, a, a big guy, he's standing out there like this, looking scary. And I walk up and he's like, this is just wrong. It's like, okay, let's talk about, they need to come out, there's going to be more planted. Uh, but it was someone who, I, I was shocked that he was out there, worried about, these trees are coming out. So it's that ongoing conversation with people and that is start, it, it takes time to resonate. Because now at Yale Stadium, I talked about three years. And sustainability was not new for us three years ago. But it takes time, and then all of a sudden, you see things starting to click. It's really great. Um, where we're going, uh, quickly I'll talk about the future, and then 
I'll open up for some questions if anyone has any. Um, where we've gotten so far is by job loading. It's by members of our team being willing to take on special projects along with the rest of their jobs. And we've done a lot. You know, I didn't even talk about you know, catering zero waste, where right now every catering event is we're, we're doing it pretty much zero waste. With our challenges, again, packaging and things like that. But it's, it's by people saying, this is important to me, it's important to us, I'm going to take it on. We're at a point now where we have dedicated staff for dining services over campus that now, you know, sustainability is their, their job. And so that's given us great momentum for where we're going next. And one of those things is data gathering. Uh, it's something that for retail, we haven't spent any time at all on that to know where we're at. So it's, you know, in these next few months, it's going to be, I'm going to have someone digging in. We're going to use the real food calculator to get an idea of where are we at, to get that benchmark, to start really focusing on our purchasing and how we can influence and change that. Um, and, and we've had, you know, we have a lot of qualitative information, but we don't have this quantitative information. And it's something where, you know, you've got a marketing guy that wants to say stuff, and I'm going back saying, you can't say that. Where did you get that? Because um, they want numbers, and they get them somewhere. I don't know where. Uh, but now we'll give them some real numbers, and it'll, it'll be better there. Um, I don't know what the future is going to end up looking like, and that's kind of a neat thing about it. So you take Carl's Jr. Taco Bell, I don't know if they're going to change or if we'll, we'll end up changing them at some point. You know, the campus has the goal to be zero waste by 2020, and that raises huge challenges for us, which, you know, I talked about packaging. Another tough thing is, you know, the gloves you use to make sure food's not getting contaminated, these are not biodegradable. And this is not a substance that there's, you know, this... Retail market for that? Or are you working that just on your own property or on university property? Or are you marketing the, that? The compost, there is an amount of pre-consumer compost that goes to the student farm and it's used by the student farm. The rest of it goes to the Jefferson Prairies. And they market it and it, I know it's going to a lot of local farmers which we're trying to make sure some of those farmers are farmers that we're getting food back onto campus from so that we can feel like we've completed a loop there. Are you selling it or are you giving it away? We give it to them. So you give it, okay. Yeah.